the morning, I'm Jane Hedges, the Dean of Norwich, and I welcome you to this podcast on the Feast of the Baptism of Christ. Let us begin our worship by thanking God for the gift of this new day. God our Father, we thank you that you have brought us safely to the beginning of this day. Keep us from falling into sin or running into danger. Order us in all our doings and guide us to do always what is righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from Matthew chapter 3. Then Jesus came from Galilee to the Jordan to John to be baptised by him. John would have prevented him, saying, I need to be baptised by you, and do you come to me? But Jesus answered him, Let it be so now, for thus it is fitting for us to fulfil all righteousness. Then he consented, And when Jesus was baptised, he went up immediately from the water, and behold, the heavens were opened, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove, and alighting on him, and lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. On the 28th of December, I noticed that Easter eggs were already on sale in our local supermarket, a sign that it doesn't take long for our shops to move on from Christmas. However, the same might be said for the church's calendar. Just two weeks after celebrating the birth of Jesus, here we are celebrating his baptism, but not as an infant, rather as a 30-year-old adult. What do we make, though, of this incident in Jesus' life? recorded in detail in the the Gospels of Matthew, Mark and Luke and alluded to in the first chapter of St John's Gospel. Matthew, Mark and Luke all describe Jesus coming up out of the water and of a voice being heard from heaven saying, This is my Son, the Beloved, with whom I am well pleased. As Jesus was about to set out on his public ministry, these words would have made a huge impact on him. He was about to face temptation, criticism, conflict, challenge to his authority and eventually be condemned to death. 
How essential it was that he knew his father's love and support. It would be this assurance that would see him through. However, on this day when the church celebrates the baptism of Jesus, we might ask ourselves why he needed to be baptised at all. What meaning did it have for him and how does this impact on us now? Let's begin by reminding ourselves of some of the details recorded in the Gospels of Matthew, Mark and Luke. In all three of these accounts, his baptism comes in the context of John the Baptist calling people to repentance and then baptising them in preparation to receive the coming Messiah. It's not surprising then that John protests when Jesus presents himself for baptism. His protest would have stemmed from his belief that Jesus as the Messiah was sinless and therefore not in need of baptism. And in part he was right of course. But this is where we see a new dimension being brought to baptism which John himself had alluded to, that of the gift of the Holy Spirit being poured out through this sacrament. So following the baptism of Jesus, the sacrament continues to demonstrate the forgiveness of sins, but in addition to this, it also signifies the outpouring of the Holy Spirit and the gift of new life. In offering himself for baptism, Jesus, as he did on so many occasions in the Gospels, identified himself totally with the rest of humanity. Yet alongside this identification with others, this is the moment confirming his call to be set apart. He is the Messiah, anointed by God as his servant who would suffer for the sins of the world. But what does all this mean for us today? At a personal and individual level, just as Jesus was proclaimed as beloved and precious by his Father at his baptism, so each one of us is assured that we are precious and unique in God's sight. That is something which we can all hold on to in these challenging times. We might feel alone or fearful at the moment, but we are all held by God. Then the gift of the Holy Spirit is also poured out on us at our baptism, so we can rejoice in the new kind of life that we've been given, our lives transformed and energised by the Spirit dwelling in us. But baptism is not just about the personal and individual, it's also about our relationship with the world. The whole of Jesus' ministry was about bringing light into people's lives. That light sometimes brought comfort and encouragement, but at other times it exposed injustice and self-righteousness and called for radical change. As his disciples, we are called to continue his work of bringing light into our world. Our mission as Christians, particularly during this current pandemic, is to share his love with everyone and to make sure that no one is excluded. Then alongside this, we are called to challenge anything that undermines justice, mercy and peace or kindness in our world. So on this feast of the baptism of Christ and at the start of this new year, let us each hold in our hearts the words spoken at the conclusion of every baptism service and be ready to put these words into action. Shine as a light in the world to the glory of God the Father. Amen.
Let us pray. Spirit of God, descending like a dove, anoint your church with your life-giving and affirming presence, that we and all Christians may bring light and hope to the world around us. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Lord Jesus Christ, at your baptism you humbled yourself in preparation for service. Give that same spirit of humility to those who govern in our world today, that the nations may be led into the way of peace and righteousness. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. God our Father, you make no distinction between peoples and invite all people to come to you. Help us to have the same generosity of mind and spirit, sharing your unconditional love with all those around us. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Holy and blessed Trinity, you bind up our wounds and bring healing and wholeness to our lives. Pour out your blessing on all who are in need, pain or sorrow, and all who care for them especially at this time, for our NHS staff. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Lord, through baptism we have new life. Hear our prayer for all who have died and welcome them into your everlasting kingdom. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Confident that all your promises to us will be fulfilled, in faith and trust we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ Jesus, establish, strengthen and settle you in the faith. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always. Amen.